Good morning and welcome, dear viewers and listeners, to this morning service, this Sunday morning service here at Whithorn from the Pentecostal Holiness Church. And the words of that lovely song written by Bill and Gloria Gaither, he touched me. They're so true. And if you need a miracle, and I'm serious about this, this isn't just freaky stuff. Jesus is our healer. He died on the cross not only to take our sin, but to take our pain, our sicknesses, our sorrows, our griefs, our diseases. In Jesus' name this morning, I pray that any of you who are watching today live or who will be watching, who are suffering from any sickness or disease, whether physical or mental, and feel that you have no hope. Because even in this country, sometimes the doctors and nurses can do no more or can do nothing to help. Look not to the being healed, to the me, 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 but to the healer, to Jesus. Lift up your heads today. Lift up your eyes and look if you need a touch today, remember the song. And remember, this is a time to make a choice for Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be His than high riches untold I'd rather have Jesus than houses or lands I'd rather 
rather be led by his nail pierced hand than to be the king of a glass domain or be held in sin's dread sway I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world of us today I'd rather have Jesus than man's applause. I'd rather be faithful to his dear cause. I'd rather have Jesus than worldwide fame. I'd rather be true to his holy name he's fairer than lilies of rarest bloom he's sweeter than honey from out the comb he's all my hunger in spirit needs I'd rather have Jesus and let him live come to be the king of a vast domain or be held in sea Jesus than anything this world of force today this world of force today I'd rather Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lindsay, you know, these are amazing days, amazing times so we're living we in. And when we started this particular ministry, had a ministry before that, before 1997, which wasn't officially registered, but still a, a ministry. Yes. In all these years, is that music I hear coming through? It Would is. you excuse me a moment? Because I'm also the controller. <laughs> on the I'll be back in a moment. I think he must have forgotten to turn the music on. <laughs> I did indeed. Song. Praise the Lord. He's excited by you that know, song. You know, Lindsay, I'm thinking, I'm hearing music. I'm hearing yeah. music. Uh, but you there's know, no one there to do, 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 <laughs> Of do, do, all do, the yeah. years, and I come back a bit so you can see yeah, all in yeah. my head. You stay there. Of all yeah. the years, mm. we probably have never gone so long with having so few people attend. No, no, we've even had the occasional <laughs> promise which hasn't materialized. <laughs> well, leaving that aside, <laughs> this must be a record. Oh, it's good. And, it's and again, it's although, good. although because of our friend Robert from Australia in Sydney, I don't know whether you're watching now, Robert, we have an online audience, but no one ever turns up except for an Australian Scott. Yeah. Brilliant. Who turned up from Sydney, Australia? God, God bless him. Yes, and he sat there singing along in Brilliant. harmony. Absolutely tremendous. But this is a record, isn't it? It's it must just be. The kind of place you could say it's not an unchurched place, maybe a post churched place. Yeah. Possibly. Let's get, we'll get into this today in the name of Jesus. Praise you. Thank you, Lindsay. If I stand there and you go there, hallelujah. Father, we come in the name of Jesus and we praise you and give you glory. 
that the whole world is being reached with the gospel. And Father, we think of the millions on the streets of Hong Kong singing hallelujah to the Lord. And know all over China, millions are longing to come to a church meeting such as this and prepared to risk their life for it. Father, we praise you for the persecuted church who are fearless, who preach recklessly the gospel without compromise, Father. Now our hearts go into Scotland today. I believe even less in percentage of church attendance to England, which is incredible. Father, we bring this nation to you. This nation that is rejecting God day after day after day. That, Father, this word which is preached from here cannot be returned void. And so this word we send out in the name of Jesus to reach the lost today. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. It is an incredible place living on the Maccas. Now the Maccas is a peninsula of Scotland. The second most southerly peninsula in Scotland, the Rins being the most southerly, where the Mull of Galloway almost touches the Isle of Man, about 18 miles between the two. And there is a move of God going now. Now, in the natural sense, you cannot see it because so many people have been to church and hate us. And the reason for this is because there has been an observance of the law in establishment, yet it's never been of God. And it's as if this place is bewitched. We say to people, why don't you go to church? And one person said to me, the church is just for sales of work and funerals. They are happy to go to church to be christened, to the occasional sale of work, and then in their coffin. There has to be more than that in Christianity. And the message to Galatia, Galatia being the place of Galatasaray Football Club. Yes, in Istanbul. I believe, however, that the Liverpool and Chelsea football clubs are this time going to be playing on the European side of Istanbul, possibly in Pontus, which is also mentioned in the Bible. But over the Bosporus, over the bridge, you come to Galatia, where there is the Galatia Tower, the place where Liverpool won the European Champions League in 2005. So in Istanbul, there's a European part of the city and an Asian part of the city. So it's a significant city being a gateway. And this has always been the case going back in history. It has seven hills like Rome. It is a most interesting place today being dominated by Islam and the tensions between fates and between fates and governments and surrounding nations. So this is a hot spot. And so also it's believed, and I believe it too, that this isn't far away from Noah's Ark, which is placed today, even today, on Mount Ararat. So we have such an interesting place. But there has been, as there is today in Istanbul, as there was yesterday in Galatia, a binding of the religious spirit. And people hate it. And who can blame them hating it? Subheading in my Bible here, is it to be a faith or observance of the law? Well, we see little of faith around here, but plenty of religious system which the people are rejecting. The sad thing is they place everybody in the same equation. I tell you this 
The last thing we want to do for anyone who attends this Pentecostal Holiness Church in Whitton is place them under the bondage of law. We preach the gospel of being crucified with Christ. Yet we attended here in Whitton. The local kirk and rarely heard the preaching of the cross. Oh, about the cross, yes, but not as a place we need to come and bow the knee today. No mention of the blood of Jesus, no singing of blood hymns, no invitation to come to the front and lay your lives down to Jesus Christ. That is the problem and that is the issue for without the without the preaching of the blood there can be no remission of sin and sin is at the root of all of this as it was in Galatia and the lack of teaching and preaching of the true gospel and so people associate church as being a dead place and who can blame them? Because instead of the Spirit of God, Brian Mason is just back from Tanzania, Africa, where he was preaching the gospel amongst Anglo-Catholics of the Anglican communion. They're more Pentecostal than the British Pentecostals. No fear there about preaching the blood. No fear there about prophesying. If you stood up and prophesied in the local kirk in Witton, no doubt you would be thrown out. For there is a quenching of the Spirit, not only there, but across all of Scotland. I'm not just particularly picking on one kirk. Across all denominations this is. It's become a dead place. A place of legal observance rather than a place where you can receive the Christ. Oh foolish Galatians, oh foolish Scots, who hath bewitched you? I got bored and bored and bored sitting. And I didn't years ago. Something has changed in Scotland. Lindsay and I lived in Scotland in the late 80s. And it wasn't quite as bad then. But what has crept into the national church in Scotland, what's also happened in England and in Wales, has been an observance of a new law. You know, we're living in the last days. What would John Knox have done? The great prophet which began the Church of Scotland would close it down today. Oh foolish Galatians, oh foolish Scots, who hath bewitched you that ye should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth crucified among you. I hardly hear the preaching of the cross. The cross is the place where we come and lay down our lives. The previous chapter declared, Paul shouting out, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. You know what we have too is a false grace doctrine, the teaching of a sinner saved by grace. Oh, what a lie that is. As Leonard Ravenhill said, it's like declaring a married man to be a bachelor. When you come to the cross, you lay down your life, become crucified with him, are risen again with him, and moving in the heavenly places far above principality and power. Yet within the local church establishments, there's defeated friend after defeated friend sitting there in their sickness and disease and in their sin with no place to go, yet 
Jesus Christ is the Savior, the healer, the baptizer in the Holy Ghost, and soon coming King, and we never hear that declaration, not even in a legal format, never mind by the Spirit, and because the Spirit is lacking, we are seeing people die day after day after day in this community. Oh foolish Scots, oh foolish Galatians, is your community the same? I guess so. And verse 2 reads, this only will I learn of you. Oh, how can I explain this? Being a Christian is not going through an academic format of going to the kirk or the church week after week after week. It's a total devotion of your life, your whole being to the cross of Jesus Christ, laying your life down that you may live in him. Receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. And then Paul asks the question, and it's so relevant. It hasn't changed from Galatia days. It goes on and on and on and on and on and on and on. The same question, relevant year after year, century after century. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Human thinking. Human philosophy. One lady came into our ministry here who attends the local kirk, thought I was having a go at the local knitting club which occurs there. No, I wasn't. I was just asking the question whether that is actually before Christ, and I still ask that question today. And yes, you can do good works in an academic way. Yes, you can knit for good cause after good cause after good cause. But it will land you in hell unless you've been to the cross. Is that being preached? The good works will land you in hell unless you've been to the cross. Verse 4, this is so right. This might as well be Paul's letter to Namachus. It's exactly spot on all these centuries after. Have ye suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit, and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? I believe if there was a great miracle that occurred before their eyes, he wouldn't see it. even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Do, do, does anyone understand this about Abraham? Is it ever taught? Because at the end of this chapter it says, if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. What is being an heir? It means being a joint heir with Christ, equal with Christ. So they're calling someone a sinner saved by grace when that person could be saved, washed in the blood, all their sins washed away, moving by the power of God. Then they are joint heirs with Christ, not a sinner saved by grace. And there's no opportunity to move on from total depravity into the perfection which Christ has called us into. It says there's neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male nor female, all one in Christ Jesus. Yet there are reformed denominations would not let a woman teach the word of God. Why? Because they do not know how to read the word of God in God. Let no women be silent in church. Yeah, what women, you idiots. You go a few verses before, you'll find it's the wives in Corinth. Not being educated. We're disturbing the meeting. They were in a separate place. That was their culture. For God's sake, learn your New Testament background. We'll teach it to you. 
So you can understand the word in some basic form of academic understanding. That's even before you think about being baptized in the Holy Ghost, which you refuse to do because your academia is more important. You are bigger childs of hell than those in the local hostelry. I tell you, these are the last days. That unless you come and give your life to Christ, then you are facing an eternity in hell. And there's more of them going there, in my view, per head of population in the so-called establishment church than there is in the local hostelry. Because at least they're being honest. Mm. Not having a form of godliness that denies the power. Yes. So what is the conclusion? Of what we're saying today. The answer is in Galatians 2. If while we seek to be justified by Christ. We also. We ourselves also. Are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. So it's as if what we're witnessing all around us is a halfway house of one foot into the spirit and one foot out of it. Okie cokey Christianity. You put one foot in, one foot out, in, out, in, out, you shake it all about. It's time to realize who we are in Christ. Verse 8 of chapter 3 declares, The scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In all, in all nations shall be blessed in thee. Then verse 10, As many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. You see, works are dead unless they're led of the Spirit. And the Bible warns, cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. No man is justified by the law in the sight of God. So then how are we righteous? For Christ have redeemed us from the curse of the law, having been made a curse for us. For it's written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And this is a covenant promise to Abraham and his seed. If ye be Christ, what does it mean to be Christ? It means to be a partaker of Christ. It means to be a receiver of his divine nature, a partaker of his divine nature, having died at the cross, having been risen up to be together with him and proclaim the gospel in power prepared to go all over the world to preach the mighty word of God. And as Lindsay comes up to sing again, I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. It means coming to the cross and laying down your life, your wealth, as Isaac Watts wrote in the great hymn, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, demands my all, my life, my all. This is the preaching of the cross. Or do you have a form of religion as the establishment would have you receive? Or are you deciding today to lay your life down at the cross of Calvary? Thank you. Thank you, David. It's wonderful. Be aware today then. 
dear viewers and listeners that we're living in the last days. Come forward, Lindsay. And that it is time <laughs> to make it. a choice. See more of you then. And because many people have actually consciously, you know, people who are famous in stage and film and particularly in the rock music world have deliberately given their lives to Satan. That's how they're called celebrities. Not all of them, but there are a large number who've done that. They're knowingly. What do you think? It's not worth it. It's, that's why this song says, I'd rather have Jesus and men's applause or worldwide fame. Listen to the words. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. I'd rather be His than have riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or lands. I'd rather be led by his nail pierced hand than to be the king of a vast domain or be world of boards today I'd rather have Jesus than men's applause I'd rather be faithful to his dear call I'd rather have Jesus than worldwide fame. I'd rather be true to his holy name. Is favor than lilies of than honey from out the cold. He's all that my hungering spirit needs. I'd rather have Jesus and let him live than to be the king.
Thank you.